so uh, so i'll not move to next slide i'll just i just want you to think what do you think could be a part of this knowledge area which one the business analysis business analysis yep planning and monitoring so mm -hmm. that's um i guess first meeting with your stakeholders um and um trying to define what the scope of the project is um and then um trying to then i guess define um more narrowly um what those requirements are to to meet that scope um and uh which stakeholders would be the ones that i'd be able to collect those requirements from no <laughs> yep yeah, so uh so i think you touched upon uh, very nicely on the stakeholders part needs to see stakeholders uh what about the monitoring part so the monitoring um is then just um after you've gotten um i guess your requirements um just making sure that um there's going to be no changes no um that that you've gotten your requirements correctly um and there's no scope creep so monitoring um and then putting in i would guess um a requirements um matrix to then trace back the requirements to who those stakeholders are and what their needs were mm -hmm. uh that's great i mean uh, you said it rightly but you said some of the things uh, which will fall under requirement life cycle management okay i mean uh, the last part you said wherein you want to be able to trace back the requirements and then you want to ensure that they are correct so right. that is going to so anything related to requirements is going to be there in requirements life cycle management oh, right? okay yeah so business analysis planning and monitoring so business analysis that you are doing right which means uh, uh, the tasks and activities that you will perform. How will you conduct your business analysis? What is the approach you're going to take? Is it the adaptive approach or predictive approach that you're going to take? And based on your, uh, based on your project methodology, which has been uh, devised in project charter, which is a PMP part, uh, let's say your uh, project is following the agile, right? So in case of Agile, how will you do your business analysis? Because you're not going to create BRD in case of Agile project. You would need to create a product backlog in that case. Correct. Correct. So what will happen is you're not going to analyze or elicit all the requirements up front. Right. So you need to devise a plan and you need to share it with the stakeholders that this is how you're going to do your business analysis. This is how you're going to uh, involve your stakeholders. And you're going to set up meetings with various focus groups and there could be meetings that you will set up wherein everyone is called in together you might want to use various techniques such as you might want to observe you might want to do observation you might want to do interviews you might want to do some uh, uh, you know uh, data flow diagrams you might want to do mock-ups so you might want to do uh, uh, prototypes so the so these all are uh, your planning part what are you going to do how you're going to do and you are planning for each of the phases like how would you do the elicitation what is the approach you will take how would you collaborate with the stakeholders how you are going to do the requirement life cycle management uh, how would you do the strategy analysis so there are a lot of hows and that goes into planning right not only that you are also focusing on how would you monitor all of this so you are going to put some metrics or KPIs in order to see that your business analysis is happening uh, perfectly. It is on track and there are no di divergence. If there are any divergence, such as you plan to do certain analysis by this date, but it did not happen and it is happening again and again. So what you will do, you will actually uh, use the monitoring mechanism that you, uh, you, you, uh, you already have decided in your business analysis plan. Right. So there are uh, uh, things around. So that's what you're planning. So that was to share a little bit of it. We are going to dig deeper into it. All right. So let's see what Webox says. Uh, 
BA planning and monitoring it describes the task to be performed to organize and coordinate the effort of business analysts and stakeholders. Output from this knowledge area task is used as a key input and as guidelines for the tasks performed in other knowledge areas. What this means is, of course, you are going to describe in your BA plan that how you are going to organize and coordinate BA and the stakeholders interactions. But at the same time, and this is also which is saying that whatever output will come from that BA plan will be used as an input for rest of these activities. So I'll just share one example with you, which will come in the content further. BA approach, which is business analysis approach. So the approach that you have decided on and you have planned is going to be an input for elicitation, how you are going to do the elicitation, when you are going to do elicitation. Similarly, it will drive requirements lifecycle management also. We will see in a moment how we will, that will happen. Uh, so the next knowledge area is elicitation and collaboration. I think you know this. It describes the task to be performed to prepare for elicitation, conduct the elicitation, and confirm elicitation results. So there are three stages. Uh, this, this part is important because that's how you are able to segregate between three items. You prepare for elicitation. You haven't started your elicitation. You are doing your groundwork. You're booking the meeting rooms. You are asking with the stakeholders if they are available during that time. Uh, of course, you will do that before meeting the rooms. And right. then you're getting, uh, you, you are asking for the time when they are available. If they're available, you are actually uh, sending out the meeting invites well in advance uh, so that you have uh, a time, sufficient time from them. And then you are also, uh, based on your business analysis approach, you're also, uh, ensuring that the room you're booking is a video conferencing room because you have distributed a team. And then you're also ensuring that, uh, 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 you know, uh, the, the material is there, uh, the basic material that you may want uh, uh, your stakeholders to use. For example, is there any uh, survey or questionnaire that you want to conduct? So you need to prepare for that, right? You need to create that uh, survey in order to get the elicitation done. So there are multiple uh, techniques of uh, getting the elicitation done. So all this is going into preparation. Correct. Now conduct the elicitation. That's a separate activity. And whatever you have planned in your approach and whatever preparation you have done for elicitation will be utilized under conduct the elicitation. So when you conduct, you need someone to be a facilitator. And there could be someone who is just taking the notes, who is not doing anything, who is not asking questions, who is just doing, just just uh, taking the notes. It could be you as a BA who is taking the notes, or if you are a team of two to three people, you can probably uh, ask someone to take notes. Because I have seen this uh, multiple times in requirement workshops that when you're trying to do both the things, you're taking notes and you're trying to understand things also. And at the same time, you have questions in your mind. It, it sometimes, uh, you know, uh, uh, it is confusing. Sometimes. Right. Right. It is yeah. Yeah, a little overwhelming and right. Trying overwhelming. To, yeah. Be, so um, either, either you will miss out the note or you will miss out asking questions. Right. Right. Or, yeah. So that's how it, it may, uh, it may, uh, you know, be a counterproductive way of doing things. So that's about conducting the, and we will see more how to conduct and then confirm. Of course, you need to communicate uh, whatever you have uh, taken notes of in the requirement workshops. You need to give it a certain format in the form of requirement. If you're following Agile, it could be uh, uh, a user story. Or if you're following waterfall, it could be uh, system capabilities or uh, your uh, UI capabilities that you want to highlight. Or if you have shared a kind of mock-up, kind of swim lane diagram in the in the while conducting elicitation activities, then you may uh, want to uh, send it out to stakeholders that this is what we discussed. And if you had to make some modifications, you made those modifications and sent it to uh, the stakeholders and asking for their sign off so that your elicitation results are confirmed. All right.
Right. It also explains how communication or business analysis information and ongoing collaboration must be done with the stakeholder. So there is a collaboration part also besides the elicitation. So this will explain how you can communicate business analysis information. So there are multiple ways. One is that you can give a walkthrough of the document which you have created, or it could be some people use mails to immediately share the minutes of meetings before they actually create the document. And there is certain ongoing collaboration, which if I take an example of Agile, you are CSM, you would know. So there are collaboration uh, in uh, backlog refinement sessions. And then there are daily standups wherein you are collaborating in order to see various things. So you, as a BA, you are part of those standups also, right? So right. it depends on the context of the uh, project, on, on the context of the methodology that project is uh, or has adopted, right? Uh, next is requirements. Any questions on this one, or should I? No. We will dig deeper into all of this. So okay. I don't have to worry about that. Requirement lifecycle management. It describes the tasks to be performed to manage and maintain requirements and design information from inception to retirement. So it's all about traceability. It's all about the priority using Moscow techniques, and then uh, you are designing information. It could be flows. It could be if you are gathering requirements around data. It could be data tables. It could be mockups of the reports that need to be generated. All of that. If there are, if, if you are working on a regulatory project, maybe the reports are changing because of uh, continuous changes from regulatory requirements. So that's how you actually need to manage and uh, need to keep the requirements traceable. Yeah. Strategy analysis, it describes the task to be performed for collaboration with the stakeholder to identify the real need. Now we are talking about business need and enable the organization to address that need. So when you say enable the organization, we just saw that there has to be a solution that need to be designed. And that need to be well thought of solution because it needs to, that is required to be aligned with business needs or the strategy that business has devised. It also explains the task to align the resulting strategy for the change with higher and lower level strategies to address the need. So there could be higher or lower level strategies that will address the need of the business during that hour. We have analysis and design definition. Requirement analysis is pretty straightforward. It describes the tasks to be performed to structure and organize requirements discovered during elicitation activities. So we have taken some notes while we were eliciting the requirements. Now we need to give some structure to them and organize. So that's where the analysis part will come. We need to specify and model requirements, which means you might have to create a mock-up. You might have to talk. So so in insurance sector, I'm pretty sure you must be uh, uh, presenting your products on website, right? And there must be a lot of digital uh, space for insurance products because that's where your uh, customers can come and buy those products or they can show interest in buying those products, correct? Well, I, I work in a little different area. I actually work in um, the HR technology area. So okay. um, it's not so much about our products over there, but more about oh, okay. uh, upgrades, oh. enhancements to existing systems, mm -hmm. for the HR piece of it. So uh, do you have any user interface that your HR guys will use? I mean, something, uh, some no. internal application. OK. Yeah, no, not for um, so far for what I do. A lot of, um, and again, I just started there. but. A lot of it is more on the back end, um, connecting missing pieces and making sure um, new processes um, run, like automating processes, but on the back end, so it's not so much of a UI interface. But not, you know, I've done, again, other projects where it's a lot more customer facing with websites. So that I understand, but. So that's fine. I mean, uh, I was, I'm not saying that this, uh modeling of requirement can only happen 
when you have a user interface. It can also happen when the systems are talking to each other. Right. right? So there could be a system heavy requirement, right? So let's say tomorrow your business says that let's migrate all the data from this database to that database. Or let's say uh, there is a merger between two companies wherein the data needs to be merged. Or let's say uh, data need to be split. So all this is around data. And of course, systems are talking to each other. So we might have to model these requirements, how systems are talking to each other. Maybe we are using swing lane diagrams in order to assist us with requirement analysis. And uh, maybe we are creating some data models. We are creating data flow diagrams. We are creating data dictionary. So we have to create uh, all of those in order to specify and model requirements, right? Uh, so that was about requirement analysis and design definition. We will have more about it. Okay. And then we have sixth one, which is uh, solution evaluation. I think this is pretty straightforward. We're trying to evaluate what you, what solution you are going to provide to uh, meet the business need that you identified in other stages. So it describes the task to be performed to assess the performance of and value delivered by a solution and recommend actions to be taken to realize the full value of the solution. 